This week, let's magnetize the brand new Kratos. Before we can magnetize, we have to get through a fair bit of building, so thank goodness for time lapses. Let's go. Take a break to play with the tracks because they're super chunky and nice. This is a lovely kit. It's a big tank. What more can you want? Okay, now we're mostly built and we're on to our first customization options with these lovely weapons. These are the little cheek weapons and they will have this little notch which is going to be incredibly useful as it means we don't even need magnets. They fit right into these pre-built little housings. The fit is firm enough that you don't need to do anything extra. These can just slot in and out. However, once you've painted it, make sure you varnish heavily so you don't lose anything to chipping. This beast of a turret is a bit more work though. The little auto cannon is the same through every variant, so I just left that well alone. The same can't be said for our main armament though. These slot normally into these little grooves inside the turret, which isn't going to work for us because it means it's stuck fast. So we have to remove these tabs and replace them with a magnet. You want to cut the tab as flush as possible to the main housing as it will keep it neat and you'll find it will leave behind a nice magnet sized hole for you to use. Once that was done, I decided to glue the thing together, but you'll actually probably have an easier time if you leave it apart until the magnet is safely secured. First things first, we have to seat a magnet inside the turret. The polarity of this magnet is really important as our main weapons have to match it across the board. So just keep checking the polarity as you're doing every stage of this. I use some super glue and then some activator which is indispensable to this project and then I dropped the turret, all really important, but it made sure the magnet was in nicely and it wasn't going to move at all. Keep checking your work throughout, here I'm just making sure that the battle cannon actually still fits and the magnet isn't impeding getting it in and out. I widened the slot to make sure the magnet could fit in nicely without any real resistance so it didn't suddenly shoot through into the barrel. This is why I recommend keeping it in two parts at this stage. I then made a dry fit to make sure it was going to fit and then tested the polarity again, putting it down on my mat in a certain orientation so that I knew as soon as I picked it up I could put it straight in and it wouldn't be the wrong way around. The best way to tell that the battle cannon is the right way up is that slot along the bottom you can see there that's sticking out. It'd be a massive shame to go through all this effort to magnetise only to have the battle cannon be upside down. Once that was safely seated with some super glue, our old friend the activator came along and made it easy. Once I was sure it had fully cured, I tested the fit again, and look at that, perfect. The only issue is it's slightly wonky at this stage because we're using one magnet on one side. But no matter, as soon as we put the roof on it will push the cannon back down into its normal alignment, so no worries there. Thank you. 
There are two notches in front of the cannon that normally help it stay seated once glued in. We don't need it for our purposes and it also makes the barrel swapping very difficult on the fly. So we have to remove these now. Just a simple cut and tidy up and you're good to go. Once you're done with that, just test the fit to make sure that the cannon slides in easy. That was... it, it made sense, but that sounded awful. It's a simple rinse and repeat job with the Volkai and the Melter variants too, and they work in the exact same way for this stage. Now each gun has a different type of attachment sat at the back, so what we're going to do is add a large powerful magnet through the plastic so we don't have anything showing on top because one variant has that grill showing, so we don't want to be drilling through that and ruining the finish. Once that was glued on the bottom I tried one of my normal size magnets and it worked just fine. To stick the topmost melter attachment I mixed up some brown stuff putty, green stuff will work here too, and mashed it into the cavity that's at the bottom. Then I placed this on top of the magnet to ensure that the magnet was where it wanted to be to stick to the one that's below the plastic. The putty will quickly mould to the shape of the magnet and with a peeling motion we can pull it all away as a single unit, which means the magnet doesn't stay stuck to the other one. Then we drown the whole thing in super glue and activator and it means that nothing's going to move ever again. There's probably a better method to do this but this was the simplest that I could find and honestly it was easy and as you can see, somehow it worked. The next issue we have is this gap at the back that is filled by a different plate depending on the main weapon we're using. I couldn't figure out a way to make this work with two magnets attaching to one another, but I realised I had this magnetic friendly metal sheet that I just found on Amazon. It's just an aluminium sheet that you can cut up with big kitchen scissors or shears, and I decided to give this a go. Once I cut off a small rectangle I fitted it inside the turret after dropping it a bunch of times because I'm super clumsy and I realised I needed to shave down a couple of the corners to allow it to fit. Once it had been cut down to size I dry fitted it again and it sat quite nicely so the next step was, as always, drown it in super glue and activator. Next stage was to fit a magnet to the plate that I wanted to place on the end. The polarity doesn't matter at all here because any side will stick to that metal sheet, so I just glued a magnet straight in, clumsily, as always. For the melter gun variant of the back plate, I didn't need to add any putty or anything, the magnet could sit quite nicely inside. Testing the fit, I'd made a bit of a mistake with my super glue application so I need to shave down the plastic slightly, hopefully you won't have that problem, but it fits nicely and the roof still goes on without a fuss. Our big magnet we put inside earlier doesn't impede anything either, which is a great bonus so we're able to continue as planned. The regular battle cannon backplate had quite a large void inside so I mushed some putty in, mushed the magnet in and covered it in super glue and activator which is the mantra for this episode. Last up is our big Volkite cannon which is the coolest looking but I'm painting this as a salamander so I'll probably be using the melter. That aside, I built the entire assembly into one piece, so essentially did the instructions in a slightly different order, mushed some putty in, mushed a magnet in, made sure it was aligned nicely with our big magnet inside and it fit on with no issues so I could finally add the battle cannon, Volkite cannon, melter cannon cover.
The lion's share of the work is now complete and we just have to do our sponsons. Put one magnet at the top of each sponson, a 3mm fits perfectly inside the ready-made gaps and glue it together. You'll see I used two here, you don't need to, I was just being overzealous. And then you put a magnet into the conveniently placed hole on the top of all the weapon options. They just slot right in, again 3mm, super glue, activator, then they stick together. Honestly, the hardest part about this stage is just tedium. It's just magnetizing different weapons the same way over and over. The most important thing here is to make sure that the polarization is towards the top, so you're not putting your weapons in upside down. You don't want to right hand las cannons because you just you just don't. Once all our weapon options are magnetised, the final thing to do is add this little scanner what's it to the top. I just cut off its little pole that normally goes straight through and super glued it to the top. I'm not particularly bothered that it doesn't turn with the weapons because now I have one of every weapon. If it does matter to you, there is definitely a way to make it work um, with another magnet inside the scanner, but I couldn't be bothered. I did the same with the bottom part, checked that all my weapons fit properly, and to my amazing surprise, they did. Let's check out all the options. Well that was super satisfying, I hope you enjoyed this video, this is by no means the only way or even best way to magnetise your vehicles, it's just something I had a go with and hopefully you get something out of it too. Once again, I've been Sam, see you next time.